okay, I think we're pretty much here. So why don't we start? Kayla very kindly sent out the agenda. Uh, so welcome and call to order. Um, we have the clerk's report. Thank you, Pat, for a very uh, detailed uh, report. You're welcome. Um, is there anything that we want to talk about on that? Does anyone have any issues regarding that? We uh, we had the first nation. The last the last time we actually met was October. Right. And we uh, that was before the high school put on that fabulous um, presentation at the library, which was very well attended. Yep. And they did a great job. There were yeah. you know, beautiful poster presentations. And um, so that worked out well. Um, thank you to everyone who so generously participated of their time. Go ahead, Wayne. Should we send them uh, a kind of informal, formal thank you from our committee? I think that's a great idea. Well, congratulations or something. I like Just that. Just yeah. that they did it and say what a good job they did. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Better late than never. Oh, yeah. No. Margaret, point of information, did you actually um get a, a approval of the minutes? No, not yet. So we're just okay. talking about it. Do I need to get approval first? Oh, we uh, I guess we could discuss them first in case there's any corrections we need okay. to make that we come across. Okay. If everyone's uh, okay with that, we will we will do that. All right. Um so anyway, uh, I, I wasn't sure, did, um, did the superintendent come that evening? Did anyone happen to notice? It was so well attended, you know, I really didn't. And then I had to leave earlier to get down to Springfield. But um, anyway. I was in the back of the room, so I wouldn't have recognized the back of Annie's head. Well, uh, it was it was excellent. I hope that we can do more uh, cross collaboration. And thank you very much to Kayla for organizing that. That yeah. was uh, well done. Thank you, Kayla. Yeah, she definitely did the heavy lifting on that. Yeah. Sorry, I had to miss it. it sounds wonderful. Now the teacher said something about because the library was not able to keep all of the trifold uh, projects up in the library, you know, for the month or whatever, uh, the teacher was saying something about uh, creating a digital version of the display so that people could visit it online. And I don't know whether or not that happened or if so, how to get at it. So that might be a little follow-up question to mm. find out if and where that is. He okay. did, that was great to put up on our website. Yeah, well, like why not? All right. Um, Pat, can you make a note that we're going to follow up with um, with uh, 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 Jason Byrne on that? I will. Thank you. Yes. Is it Byrne or Burns? I have B-Y-R-N-E. B-U-R-N-S. Oh, I had B Y R N E. Okay. So, Wayne, it's B U R N S? Yes. Thank you. That's a spelling correction for minutes. Yeah, for Thanks. the minutes. Okay. So, um, Kayla, if you want to send me his email address, I'm happy to follow up with him on that. Okay. Anyway, we'll move on. Um, Did we lose Kayla? You know, she hasn't been feeling well. So she's sort of sitting in the background there. Okay. Uh, the survey committee meeting, we'll, we will, the survey committee report, we'll hold that for now because we will discuss that after we review the minutes. And then um, the new business open agenda, we had some issues there. Um, right, so we talked about, uh, you know, civil conversations in our uh, community meetings. Um, 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hope you'll bring that up later. Oh, the uh, Board of Health? Mm -hmm. I don't particularly want to talk about that. But, no, that was uh, pretty dark. Um, I did uh, have someone reach out to me, uh, and I think maybe we should post hold that until we get to the regular part of the meeting. Right. All right. Um, and that's about it. So can uh, so with that one correction uh, of Jason's name, uh, can we have a, a motion to accept the minutes? Thank yeah. you, Joanne. Seconded. Second. Sarah, thank you. All right. All in favor of accepting the minutes? Okay. That's affirmative for everyone. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, the third item on our agenda is Hopkins report of which I don't have anything. Does anyone have anything to report there or heard anything from maybe Amy or what's happening at the school these days? Nothing from me. Okay. Nothing. Okay. Good. All right, so number four, the item on the agenda is All Business Columbus Indigenous Peoples Day follow-up. I think we've sort of covered that, uh, unless anyone has anything they would like to add. No, I would just second Wayne's idea to send them some kind of a formal and informal um, acknowledgement of our appreciation for their efforts. Thank if you. I had been there, I, w I would volunteer to do that, but I'll work with somebody on it. But uh, I, I did send an email um, right after, but I think a, a letter from the committee would be nice. To yeah. Jason, but copied to the principal or the yeah. superintendent. Yeah. To Annie, yeah, Annie Kendall. And I think you're right, Wayne, the principal, maybe the superintendent. <clears throat> And uh, yeah, yeah, that would be terrific. Okay. It's great might, to have good work. might we also ask if they, they might be thinking this could be an annual event? Just just curious. It's nice to plan, have lots of time. Yeah. I think it was a class project. Uh, oh. But we might, I mean, we, we might invite Jason if he has another project like this mm -hmm. to please let us know that we would be interested in. Great. Mm -hmm. We carbon copy the select board since we're a committee appointed by them. Oh, sure. Um, so carbon copy them uh, on the letter of appreciation? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Wouldn't I don't know, to, wouldn't I don't know to, the protocol. <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking it's one, one little positive thing that might cross their eyes. I don't care. Uh, Jane, Jane is the rep on our committee, Kayla says. So ask her. Maybe, yeah. Ask her. Yeah. I, I'd be happy to, to draft a letter, but I'd love to work with somebody else who was at the event. Yeah. Well, I was certainly at the event. I was. Yeah. I was also. I wasn't. Sarah? Yeah. I was there too, yeah. Well, Sarah, do you want to work with Kayla? Sure. I was only there for the food. <laughs> <laughs> food works. <laughs> All, right. All right. So Sarah and Kayla to draft a letter. Great. Margaret, were you going to follow up about whether there's a virtual presentation? Was someone going to follow up on that? Oh, yeah, we should do that, too. Um, oh, right, right, right. The virtual presentation. That's right. Didn't he say he, he would record something or he would share something? Yeah. Sure, I'm happy to do that. Could that question go with the letter of thanks, or should we time those two things to coordinate, or does it matter? I don't know that it necessarily matters. I don't know. I mean, if there is a digital display, we can include thank you for doing it also as a digital display in the thank you letter. 
<clears throat> I, yeah, I I think it would be nice for him to get the thank you letter, um, and then comes the request, or yeah. to include that in the request. It was such a wonderful presentation. Would you consider making? Right. Are you considering making a digital version of this, and might we place it on our website as well? Yeah. Nice. I think that would be a nice way to close it. Yeah. I to to Joanne's thought about annual. You know, as as a teacher, he's working with a different crop of tenth graders every year. And it may be that he wants this to be an annual. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. We can ask. Yeah, um, that might be a part of the letter. Sure. Yeah. yeah. yeah we're or if not annual, next year. at least biannual, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I was just so impressed by how he put this together and the fact that he initiated it and then was so willing to share it. That was not an easy task. And um, yeah, all and the of kids this. really stepped up. And yeah, and to follow yeah. up with these other things, I think is good. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, am I hearing the consensus of the group then that uh, instead of, uh, you know, that we combine this all into one letter? Okay. Sort of a thank you. Um, ask the question about if this will be a continuation. Mm -hmm. And then if there is a, so cover three points. Thank you. Uh, if this will be an annual event. And if possible, if he has the virtual presentation, will he share it with us? Will we put it up on our website? Is that the gist of, yeah, go ahead, Kayla. Yeah. My perspective would be not to go that route because as a teacher, if he gets a commendation from the community for something he's done, that goes mm -hmm. in his personnel file. Um, as documentation versus if we're asking him about something in the future, I think that's that's a separate thing. And, yeah. Okay. You know, okay. Okay. Want to do it again. Maybe it was too much work for him. Right. Very good point. Thank you, Kayla. All right. Take I I do that separately. Yeah. Sure. Separately. Right. Let's let's do the commendation letter and then business in a separate yeah right. i like that okay at least to okay. express our openness to whatever future we would work be happy to work with him mm -hmm. on future projects of this kind to make them happen at the library. right yeah there's yeah. nothing wrong with cool. that yeah and then the third letter could be the the uh freedom of information act suing him for the <laughs> digital <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm a little punchy. I was at work until 4 a.m. So sorry. Oh, oh, that's, wow. that's the wrong uh, a.m. and p.m. Yeah. That, that swapped. Can I yeah. <laughs> all right. Pat, were you able to get all that down? Oh, I hope so. <laughs> okay. So essentially, we're going to have two uh, letters. The first one, just thanking him for a fabulous job that he did. And, um, and, and the students. students. Yeah, for sure, the students. Um, and Sarah, you said something else? And oh, oh, of, about the look forward to yeah, with him in the being, yeah, being open to a future project together. Yeah. Perfect. So that would go in the first letter. And then maybe when we get that response, uh, we we'll, 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 we'll wait a week or so, I don't know, and then happy to send out uh, a second email to him um, asking him um, for the virtual presentation. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Does that seem to cover the gist of what we've just talked about, folks? Yes, yeah. Margaret, are you going to follow up? And Kayla, are you going to draft the thank you? Is that where we landed? Sarah and I will work on it together. Okay, great. And then and this, I, I'm happy to follow up. And this okay. will not be an email, right? This will be a, a letter. A letter, yeah. I will do the email. With copies, with copies to the principal yeah. and the superintendent. Yeah. Okay. 
Yes. Thank you for clarifying that. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, if we seem to have covered that, uh, maybe we can move on to the survey committee report update from Pat and me. Um, so I actually sent out to everyone because Sarah pointed out that she wasn't able to open the document share. So I included you folks on the um, Google Docs to share what uh, Pat and I had put together. So um, the first email from me, you could discard, but the second one, you have the ability to open it. Oh. Okay. So we'll just give you some background information on this. Pat and I got together and I, I, Pat, please jump in because this has been a few months ago now, but um, we, we sort of brainstormed a bit and then thought, you know, well, let's talk about what has been done in the community. Uh, some, of, some of the things we already know that are going on. And maybe let's try to compile this. Uh, maybe with the goal of, uh, I think Jane Nevinsmith at one point had said, you know, like at a, at a annual town meeting, we could have something about DEI and all the different things that are going on in the community about this. Pat, was that your sort of recollection? Mm -hmm. And also that, you know, we talked about working with David um, Court, Dr. Court at UMass, um, who's an associate dean for diversity, equity, and inclusion, and a professor of sociology. And we were, we were trying to gather some information about Hadley currently to speak with him and provide him with an overview um, before just asking for help with a survey. Right. Yeah. So um, essentially, we put together this uh, three page document. Um, and uh, if you are not able to open it, uh, would people mind terribly if I went over it? Um, could you just tell me when, when you emailed that? Because this is not ringing a bell for me at all. Just, just now, like just minutes before the meeting started. Oh, oh, okay. So maybe I can find yeah, it. I, I still can't get into it. Wow. Even though I put your thing to share it. Hmm, your email. Um, there we go. Okay. Yeah, I keep oh, I can, I'm going to see if I can print it out. How do you, let's see how we print I'm these. I'm not getting it. <clears throat> I mean, I have the link in the 4.44 p.m. one, and it says it still says I need access. So I clicked on the request access button, and it says it sent a request, and then I'll get an email letting me know if the file is shared with me. Well, uh, I didn't see that, but I did uh, send out an email after that, and I put everyone's email address on it. Uh, that one I don't seem to have. I just have the one from you about still getting used to Google Docs. Sure. Okay. That, um, all right. So this titled Summary of School, Police, HR Department. Yes. Okay. okay so yeah. some people are getting it. But we no. can probably just summarize, Margaret, right? Yeah. I don't, yeah. See, I don't see Sarah or Joanne on the address among the addresses. Yeah, you should get that, Sarah, after your Cori check passes. <laughs> all right. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to print it out. Okay, gonna, uh, I, I sent it to everyone. I can certainly resend yep. it. I found you it. You want to share screen and then everyone can see it? I, can I share the screen? Oh, Wayne, can you? Can you uh, Wayne can. Uh, can you do I that? don't need it. Well, do, Kayla do, can. The people need it, do it. But I'm, I just printed it out for myself. All right. Well, make, Margaret, if we make you a co host, then you can share the screen. Okay. Oh. All right, I'm a co host now. Let me, let me go to Google. Docs. Okay, let me go to Zoom. Oh, oh long day. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> okay, can people see what I've got up on there now? Beautiful, yeah. yes. Okay, um, 
So the CDEI compiled the following list of existing programs, activities, and policies that Town of Hadley individuals, officials, agencies, institutions, and businesses have in place to promote anti-racism, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Members gathered information via online searches, website reviews, Zoom conversations with Hadley officials. This document is a draft and we welcome comments, updates, and edits. Please feel free to reach out to us with your thoughts. Okay. All right, so we uh, did it under headings of programs and activities. So Hadley Learns, we went through the list of everything that Hadley Learns has done to date mm -hmm. that we are aware of. And really, it's quite an amazing uh, list of, um, of basically, um, you know, a, 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 a great program about race and diversity and book discussions and, you know, all that sort of thing and how we address inequity. Um, so... Um, we, the, the blurb about Hadley Learns, an inclusive group of parents and college students, teens and seniors making a safe space to learn, discuss difficult topics and spark action towards anti-racism. And the group is independently led, professionally facilitated. It includes Hadley residents, elected officials and town employees, participants read books, watch videos, listen to podcasts, talk with community members and join teams of people who want to explore and act on specific issues. Uh, towards making a more equitable community. And then a list of all the topics that they have covered. And you'll see we scroll down until the last one, which was uh, January, 2022. Yeah, it's coming up on Thursday. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's the all we can save: truth, courage, and solutions for the climate crisis. So, yeah. So, Sarah, you're you're an active member of that, and I believe Kaylin Wainer as well. Is mm -hmm. there anything that you want to speak about about um, your group? I think that's good just to put the put it out there what they've done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's a really supportive, um, very friendly. Uh, thing. And I know one of the sort of points is that the conversations are not recorded so that people aren't worried about putting their foot in their mouth and then having that come back to haunt them. <laughs> right. This age of that kind of stuff going on, that's a real damper on people making mm -hmm. progress on, on these difficult issues. So it's very supportive that way. It's very uh, open. Yeah, I think that's a really good point to make, you know, in yeah. this culture of, you know, cancel, cancellation of yep. people who make mistake, honest mistakes right. in their use of language and understanding when I mean, we all have to sort of do that to continue to grow. Uh, that might actually be an, an interesting point to add to it that, um, yeah. you know. That's how it makes it a safe space is that it's not <coughs> being recorded. Yeah. Yeah. I like and, that. You know, it means that if you miss one, well, you missed it. You right. don't catch up with the discussion later unless you have a private conversation with somebody you know that was there. Okay. Yeah. I don't uh, know I if think, we need to include that, but. Uh, how about if I just it. add the meetings? Meetings are not recorded. Are not recorded uh, in order um, to. I just leave it there. The okay. Yeah. Okay. I think they're not recorded. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. The rest is implied. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's yeah, part of making a safe space. Yeah. Ayla has a question for Sarah. Is there any sort of information about the number of participants that have been engaged in these conversations? I don't think that's been tracked. My experience is that it ranges quite a bit. I mean, there've been a couple of times when there were less than 10 people and we all stayed in the single group and discussed. And there've been other times when we've used three or four different breakout groups for discussion also, so that it's a small enough little group to, to have a good conversation. It just depends on how many people come. 
you be willing to ask if they have any data on how many people have participated? I can ask. That'd be useful to have, I guess. Yeah, and yeah. if you find anything, uh, we just add it to this report. Sure. Send it to Margaret so she can add it. Or to Patricia. All right, thanks, Sarah. Um, then we, from there, we move down to the summaries of our conversations with uh, Dr. Annie McKenzie, uh, Chief Mike Mason, and Human Resources. Um, and thank you to Wayne and to um, Pat for putting um, this together. Um, and we just kept it as bullet points, so, you know, just to kind of keep it easy and clean to read. Um, Dr. Annie McKenzie, anti-racist learning specifically added to the school district statement in 21, resources allocated. Diversity Club established for several years, school handbooks rewritten to address issues of microaggression uh, that was written by the students and the teachers. Both school councils, that is the high school and the elementary school have made DEI a priority and committed to collecting, counting and preparing data relative to anti-racism, inclusion, equity and diversity. Uh, an English Language Learners Advisory Council and English Language Parent Advisory Council created this year. Um, high school will be undertaking work along with Collaborative for Education Services, an attempt to collect data, interview, survey of people of color and, under, and other underrepresented groups to capture people's actual experiences. Created stipend positions for family outreach, coaching to help teachers plan lessons that address anti-racism and diversity, equity, inclusion, and job posting stress promoting diverse workforce, asking candidates to explain how their attitudes align with that of the district before they are called for interviews. Uh, currently, the workforce is predominantly white and female, which is a statewide problem. For these interviews, uh were they recorded and can people access them? Yeah, the interview with, yeah, these three interviews or conversations were recorded and I think the links to them are on our webpage. Yes. I, yeah. That's true. I think we should say that. Oh yeah, say that here. Mm -hmm. uh, should I say that at the beginning? Sure. All right, I'm gonna scroll right back up. Well, we shouldn't say it there, but say it before the interviews because the program, the uh, Hadley oh, Learning right. Center is not recorded. Yeah. Well, I was just yeah. going to say that the links to the interviews with individuals are posted on right. our website. Right. But you can, what's right. below the Hadley Learns chunk? All right. So, um, so then here, I yeah, was maybe put it down there. Yeah. So it's closer to the, Actual. Okay. Uh, I would say links to the following conversations. So we get in both the superintendents and the uh, uh, and the police chiefs. <clears throat> That's satisfactory for people? Yes. Okay. And then Mike Mason, uh, statistics that he gave us, 14 patrol officers, approximately 5,500 residents, additional 55,000 people who travel to Hadley to shop, eat, visit, or drop off students. Uh, five officers are certified mediators. Two officers are certified rape aggression defense program instructors, strongly committed to hiring police officers who have a service orientation versus a warrior mindset, mm -hmm. adopted President Obama's task force on 21st century policing in process of seeking accreditation for mass police accreditation commission, 
first step towards aligning with the 21st century policing policies. Many requirements laid out in the police reform bill already in place, training increased consistent with the new uh, police reform bill, committed to diverse workforce and training on anti-bias and dealing with persons with mental illness, transgender youth, et cetera, submits data on officer stops to national database, proactive in using body and cruiser cams, all use of force requires reporting to ensure officers are acting appropriately, the chief is working with the DA on implementing a restorative justice program. Uh, any bias complaints require internal affairs investigations, processes streamlined to quickly respond to lesser complaints and resolve issues to the satisfaction of the complaint complainant. Uh, HPD is in the process of implementing a wellness officer position, has implemented a workforce implementation program to identify red flags among individuals and to intervene. And the chief was very supportive of hiring a social worker to respond to mental health and substance abuse incidents. And then the human resources, the town of Hadley. Um, the, uh, so right now the town is without an HR director, as you all know. Um, and so, uh, you know, things could change here, but the budget um, covers one HR director and one full-time admin assistant. Uh, it's 150,000 total budget of which 120,000 comprise salary and benefits, several thousand dollars split between payroll services, dues training, office supplies, safety and management training were two identified areas that would benefit from additional funding. Uh, we had a little bit of a breakdown about our workforce here in town. 95% of employees are white, 60% of employees live in Hadley with the remainder living nearby. Approximately 300 employees include volunteers, appointments, full and part-time positions. So we added this as an area uh, for Dr. Court uh, and an area for us to consider. Internships are one area that could be mutually beneficial, especially in the area of data science analysis and project-based experience. I think given the fact that we don't, we don't have a uh, full-time, uh, we don't, you know, uh, uh, graciously, um, um, Deb Radway, who used to be the HR director at Amherst has stepped in yet again um, to cover the town of Hadley while the town is looking for a full-time human resource person. Um, she is part-time. Um, and her, you know, and she's got a lot going on right now in terms of the stuff that needs to happen in town and budgeting and working with the different departments. So there's not a whole lot left over in terms of time because she's not full time uh, to really uh, explore some of the areas in which HR uh, uh, might um you know, what we, what we might suggest, I guess, at this point. Wait. Should we put that information after the words, the town is without a permanent HR director? I did that. that. Uh, it's right what, at the top. The did. HR department is the newest yeah. department in the town of Hadley as of November yeah. 2019, but the newly okay. appointed That's director. Hmm? Say again. Permanent HR director, comma, uh, or period, uh, we have a uh, temporary part-time director, this person for Amherst. Should, should we say that there is somebody in place even though they're part-time? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I, I, okay, I, I guess I implied it at this stage of town is without a permanent HR director, but, uh, uh, my first question was, so so is there a part-time one? Is anybody, is anybody looking over things now? That was my question when I read, we're without a permanent HR director. Right, that What's, sounds like there's nobody who, at all. Who's doing the leadership? Who, what, what, what arrangements have been made? That, that was just the question that came up. Put the name of the put Dave's De, Deb's name up there, Wayne. Is that what you're suggesting? I, I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I, I included this, the third bullet point, but it's, what strikes me as interesting about it is that this was really the previous HR director's um, um, where he was going with diversity, equity, and inclusion hiring practices. And so he was highly focused on uh, an individual's economic status, veteran status, and education status. Um, um, and I, you know, I, I, I don't know how that resonates in terms of, um, does that therefore mean that new HR directors have their own personal focus? Uh, you know, these are questions I really, uh, you know, areas that I don't know. I mean, it does. Yeah. Well, this is, this is. The HR directors bring their own you. personal values into this to focus on certain issues. Isn't this simply saying what, reporting on what he said? I mean, we're not taking this up as a place to influence policy. We're right. Right. reporting here on what yep. was said. Yeah, right. Okay. There might be a separate place where we want to discuss that and make recommendations, but right here is simply reporting, I think. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think your point is a good one, Margaret. And to Wayne's point, I think this is a this is a snapshot of time. And so from that snapshot of time, I think we are going to figure out maybe where we'd like to go or some of the issues that might be priorities, given what is current. But not in this document. But right? not in this document. Exactly. This document serves as like a snapshot of what is. Okay. Why is this um, internship sentence in red? Um, because we were thinking that that could be an area that Dr. Court might be able to help us on. Might we put the fact that there's not a permanent director in red also? Oh, because those weren't actually part of that particular conversation, because. Yeah, at this stage. Uh, right. your, it's an update that since the conversation. Would that, be, would that be helpful to put that in red? Margaret, is your use of red intended to be action items or just anything? It was. It was kind of intended to be a point yeah. where we where we might want to focus. Yeah. So that's, this wouldn't. This wouldn't qualify for that. So, okay. tell us, she can, you can italicize it or something. Yeah, right. You could emphasize it otherwise, right? Uh, it's already italicized. So, um, all right, so, what do you want me to do with that internship? Do so you want me to just take it out? No, that's fine. That's good. No, I think it's good to put it in there. Yep, that's fine. Would it be helpful if we went back to the dates of the interviews and inserted the dates next to the director? That's a thought. Yeah, I can certainly do that. Oh, yeah, we can do that like after, not now, but we can go back and find the dates and just insert sure. them. Yeah. Okay. okay. <clears throat> I'm just taking some notes, folks. Would, sure. It's would, okay. Apropos of that, would uh, the date of the interview or this summer be qualified in parentheses with a date? This summer meaning 2020, uh, 2021. I don't know when this report is going to be read. Well, uh, did we do all this in 2021? Yeah, I think we did. Maybe that's... Somebody can look it up, though. Yeah, I think we did all this in 2021. Yeah, that, um, 
that may so be we've got TEI summary report for town of Hadley 2021. Yeah, that, that may be enough. This summer would refer to 2021. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, compensation study. Um, again, that was, uh, that's on hold. Uh, because it was basically, um, it was uh, the previous director's feeling that there was bias and that the methodology wasn't fully transparent. Therefore, he wanted it redone. There were five community metrics, but I have no idea whether that was done. And I think everything, as far as I know, it was not done. So, um, so you know, I really had trouble actually even including HR in this because it felt like he was here for such a short period of time, just a matter of months. And then he left. And so it, it you know, <clears throat> I mean, are we including this to say, yes, we did talk to the H to show that yes, the DEI talked to them, but, but then what's the merit of it if, if. Uh, right, it's truly um, a very, right very focused snapshot it's not something that that right. reflects years of right. yeah, yeah in a way it reflects more what he was hoping to do rather than what he actually got done right and so there, therefore since i believe none of this got done i wasn't sure yeah what it should even include it i think it should be included as a matter of record we interviewed yeah. the person and this is what he said. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. maybe there's even like a one sentence preamble that says this was based on an interview with a the new HR director who only lasted in you know was only in the position for X number of months. So that kind of right. qualifies it. All right. I'm happy to um yeah, I mean, he was in the position longer if we want to include that he was paid, you know, right, right. his Iraqi uh, experiences, but actually. He was there. actively working in the office. Well, yeah, I don't know. I'm That's sure there's an eloquent true. way to say that. My feeling yeah. is it just makes it more complicated. Somebody reading this report doesn't need that kind of information. I mean, it's not going to change anything that's in the report well for context we could we could list the name of the person the date of the interview and their their tenure we could do it for every right. person we interviewed you know when they took office and if they're okay. currently in office or they're no longer in office so that's those are just the facts oh that's a good good approach yeah yeah, well, yeah. and you've mentioned annie mckenzie and Meg Mason. So. All right, I can uh, uh, certainly uh, find out that information and then add that and um, maybe then that would, would, would cover it. Um, His name would go after Town of Hadley? Yeah, human resources, Ed, uh, Ed um, drawing a blank on a surname right now, uh, but. What was you know, it, Ed, somebody? Yeah, Ed, anyway. I, can't, I, can't I think it's ended with it. Did his last name start with an H? I'm not sure. Not sure. Um, but yeah, I can go do that and put when they started and. Uh, and say current or you know mm -hmm. whatever useful um i mean what i do say here is that it's november of 2019 right mm -hmm. was when was when he was sort of appointed because it's the newest department in town so we didn't even have an hr department mm. right so really yeah, that's about that yeah. 2020 and 21 and i think it, uh, pretty much most of 2020, he was away. That's what I would assume reading this, that the, the, the department is 
was created in November 2019. And then if we say when he left. Edward O'Connor. Edward O'Connor, thank you. It's good, good. <clears throat> thank you, Google. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, all right. So, yeah. So, anyway, that's why I personally went back and forth on whether to even include this because it felt so short. Right. Uh, and uh, as far as I know, none of this, uh, um, you know, was was able to be done. Um, all right, so we'll move on from that. Then we um, added the Council on Aging, public conversation with Professor Miller, uh, Chronicles History of Enslaved People and Servants in Hadley. There's the Food Equity Outreach. There's online anti-racism resources and joint programming with Hadley's Goodwin Library about the his history of civil rights as it connects to today's struggles. Uh, the Historical Commission, Online History of Slavery and Servitude at the Porter Phelps Huntington House since its construction in 1752. So that's with papers, diaries, and places there. So that's what I know of um, sort of what we've been looking at all year. Um, we have a couple other ones. Remember, we have the. Right. Um, I'm looking here Pat, at my notes. Pat, you talked to a church. You got to at least well, one. Well, no, letter. I wasn't thinking about that, but that you're right, Sarah. I was thinking of, I actually wrote something up about the, the diversity committee and Hopkins and also some of the events that we've, that have happened like. Oh, um, right. Oh. Remember? Yes. Well, I think me. I sent that to you. You could pull that part up. Yeah. Send it. Just, so I think there are three additional um, examples of activities and programs that are recent, yep. that I think are very impressive. Okay. What's the beginning of this section of the, this report? The Sorry, one I'm referring to, Wayne, is an earlier section where we have the Hadley Learns, and then we have... So we haven't included what we've done, essentially. Right, but I first, sent that first. to you. I have Hadley Learns, Hadley's World Fair, First Nations, and the Hap Hopkins Academy Diversity Club. You, you're right. I've got it. Oh, you're right. Thank you for that. I will slot that in mm -hmm. and, um, and check that out. So this, this encompasses both the interviews we have conducted and a list of organizations that's right that we have looked at so this is to be uh, a summary somehow of organizations that are dealing with these issues in hadley is that right yes yes okay So if somebody there, from the outside were looking at Hadley and saying, all right, you're interested in, you know, um, anti-racism, diversity, equity, and inclusion, you want to promote those issues, what is already going on in Hadley? And this is a summary of those things that as we as we know um, currently, and, and I'm pretty sure there are more things that we may want to add too. But isn't like we're starting at ground zero and nothing is happening in Hadley. Mm -hmm. I, I think I would put um, an explanation of the list. The first are interviews we've had, and then is a list of other organizations that are working on these same things that we haven't talked to. We know about, but haven't had discussions with. Uh, Wayne, are you talking about the way that this document is structured? You would like to see it restructured? I'm just trying to get an understanding of that. Is that what you would like? This section of the document, it starts out with interviews we have had, and then it goes on to list other organizations, but we haven't had conversations with them. And it seems right. I see what you're saying. 
the, yeah, the, so, so in other words, either put our, our conversations at the end right. or at the beginning. Yeah, but just note, uh, after we've listed these things that, that we learned from the interviews, mm -hmm. these are additional organizations or groups in Hadley that are dealing with various issues. Um, just denote that these we haven't talked to. You don't have to say that, but here are additional organizations, mm -hmm. Hadley, dealing with the issues of DEI. Right. So I think I can accomplish that, Wayne, by um, reorganizing it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that makes sense to put the work that we've actually done, which is conducting those conversations at the top, and then yeah, also right. adding these other organizations that we've found out about, but like you say, we haven't like investigated them the same way. Right before the Hadley Council on Aging, here are a list of other uh, groups in Hadley who are dealing with issues of DEI. Mm -hmm. I don't think you need to change. Right. The well, I mean, I, so programs. So in other words, yeah, I, I would yeah. take out programs and activities. I would or put that move. at the bottom, put our DEI stuff at the top. I think that's what you're getting at, Wayne. Um, and then these are the other programs and activities that have been occurring. Yeah. Yeah, I would say just lift from programs and activities all the way down through Hadley Learns and right. put that below the... And put it all beneath the DEI beneath summary. the conversations. Yeah. Wayne, would that, uh, would that, uh, would so. that satisfy what you're thinking? I think so. I, I would, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that works because Hadley mm -hmm. Learns is really its own thing the way the Council on Aging is doing its own thing and the way... Mm -hmm. you know, okay. et so it's a cut and paste issue, basically. Yeah, just a quick cut and paste. So we put our own work at the top. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and other then, people's work that we're aware of at the bottom. Okay. And and to that point, uh, Pat, I will, so I'm so sorry, I passed over the other stuff. I'll add that into it. And then um, add the other, you know, do the cut and pasting on the bottom. Okay. All right. Um, all right, well, let's move on. If, if everyone's um, okay with what we've got so far, we're going to move on then to the um, update on the draft questionnaire for reporting and resolving allegations of discriminatory behavior from Mark. I just, I just wanted to say, I think you did a great job on that. You know, yes. I think, I think yeah. you, heard, you heard a lot of edits, but uh, that is no reflection on what a great job you did putting that together. And then, so the pendulum can swing the other way. Uh, anything that's happened on the next point, uh, Wayne will have to speak to because I have completely dropped the ball. So if he made any progress without me, um, I will pass the microphone to Wayne, but I was not, did not make any progress on the- uh, Okay. All right, Wayne, can you speak to- to work out for you. Before we went any further, we had some things to work out about yeah. how we were going to go about it. So we'll do that next week, I'm, sh I'm sure. Yeah. That work, Mark? Sure. Okay, so um, then we move on to, um, that's it for old business. New business budget request for um, fiscal year 22, the amount and purpose. Would anybody like to speak to that? I think there was a feeling that maybe it's premature to request money in these fiscally challenging times. Mark, did you sort of um, suggest that at a previous meeting that maybe asking for money is not timely? I'm thinking the only thing we might, we might, even consider asking for money and it would be pretty small would be a if we were going to do some signage for any events we could estimate what we thought we'd want to do for signage or um, but advertising we could probably do through the town website so that that wouldn't cost anything and i don't think we'd have any i don't know what other costs we would have to really justify you know um 
Do we have any continuing ed diversity costs and training? I think most of the things we're finding are just free online investigation. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't make up costs in, in this current climate. Ayla. I was going to say that we've, we've missed the window for this budget cycle. And it's something to think about moving forward. I mean, as, as issues and events and ideas come up, that would be the kind of thing to talk about maybe looking at for the next budget cycle. Okay, thank you, Kayla. All right, um, and I think we'll get a better sense of that. I mean, it, it feels like uh, it feels like if we can get this document, and Pat and I will continue to work on it. Done, then we can see where we're at. At least where we we know the town is at at this point. There could be a lot more going on that we don't know about it. Um, but maybe that will help us also redirect our focus on the areas we think we would like to, um, you know, that might cost us money uh, and therefore help uh, help determine what the budget should be. And going forward, I don't, you know, you can, anyone can correct me, but I think the timeline is that any funding you, re you would request would be for the next fiscal year, which tends to start July 1st gets voted on in May. The articles, I think they usually ask for them in January. So we'd, we'd need to know by December what we were gonna ask for. I think that's the timeline, roughly. I think you're right. Okay. Um, all right. Um, open agenda. So I think that's sort of like any new business uh, that people might have. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Wayne. Well, was it mentioned in one of our past meetings that we wanted to sponsor some sort of event this coming summer, spring, uh, maybe in conjunction with some other event that's happening on the common. Uh, I think we, we talked about it, but we didn't come up with anything specific. Is that something we want to revisit? If not at this meeting, think about for the next meeting. I think it's anything we can do to let people know that we're here and what we're here for. <laughs> Uh, I think it's important. Uh, putting things on the town website, I don't think is going to get a lot of traffic. So I think we need to do something more public, but uh, maybe that's for a future meeting. But maybe I understood it wrong. But I would like to see us do something uh, to be more of a presence in the community and let people know what we're doing, what we're about, and invite them to join us. Like, for instance, if there was going to be an asparagus festival, we could have a table. Exactly. Yeah. So maybe that's for a future, a future item for the next meeting. The question, do we want to, to be more public? Uh, do we want to sponsor events that invite the public to work with us? That's not for discussion now, but I, I, I think maybe in the intermeeting time, I can suggest an item for the next, uh, an agenda item for the next time. Mark? I, th I think one opportunity we might have is, if I'm not mistaken, I think we all are here because of Christian standing up at a town meeting and talking about this committee. So we might want to think about some 15 second or 30 second opportunity and what that might look like at the next town meeting that we, you know, we have that opportunity with that captive audience there. I think Jane Nevin Smith also, her point was we should have something put together 
to take young people to the, um, right. so that they can see, well, you know, what, what is going on. And isn't there an annual town report that yeah. were, we, were we trying to get something into that? Yeah. yeah. Mm, good idea. And I think yeah, that we sort that. of... We should, should probably, we should probably check with, with Jennifer um, to see what the cutoff is on that. And I just suggest that this be an item in our next uh, meeting and that we all think about what we might want to yeah. do yeah. This part mm. and focus it a little more than. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think if we're near to missing a deadline, I would be comfortable with Margaret's report that she shared with us this evening and that we've tweaked a little bit. To me, that looks like a really good thing to put in the annual report for the town. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't, that would be our first draft. Okay. That could be. And if we have time, we can edit. Right. right. And, yeah, like yeah. If, if the cutoff for that document, for that booklet is between now and the next time we meet, I'm comfortable with that report going in. Okay. And I just want to stress that's really not my report, my, my document. <laughs> Well, it's the one that you shared with us. <laughs> As I didn't blame it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we asked Jane uh, about that. Is there a place? Well, she was the one who suggested it at like the next annual town meeting. Like, I guess you, you know, the one that's in the summer, right, Mark? Right. Is that right, Mark? There's one in yeah, the summer. Yeah, it's in May. Right. Right. right, but by that time, that town report booklet is already published, so we need to get into yeah. that before that. Right. Yes, yeah, that or yeah. and the other thing she also suggested was just if if we even didn't, but that we would have it there so people could right. pick it up while they're picking up their town right. report and tuck it in. Yeah, I have not heard. Um, I have not heard uh, Jim Maxmoski say anything to the planning board about. Uh, I think each year he says, you know, this is what I'm going to put in for our report. So it's probably coming up, but uh, I, I haven't heard him talk about it yet. So we mm. may have some time. Mm. Shall we ask Jane about the timing? Absolutely. All right. Um, the other issue someone raised with me, a member of the community reached out to me and wanted to uh, inform me that in Deerfield, um, there, there was some sort of town meeting that was um, less than civil. And as a result of that, they were instituting a civility course, like some sort of civility program for town employees. Um, and, um, but I, I, at this point, uh, you know, I don't know anything about it. And um, yeah, and I don't think it necessarily should come from us. That would be my sense of that. Um, you know, I think these things are best coming from the top down to show that leadership has buy-in of this. Um, and that might be something, you know, I, I don't know if other people agree with that or not, um, but might be something worth discussing at a future date. That's probably another good thing to discuss with Jane. Mm. I also like the idea of, of doing something like that before there is uh, uncivil meetings going on mm -hmm. or are there already uncivil meetings going on in Hadley? <laughs> there are and Margaret could tell you about that if she wants to. Uh, uh, no, I, I have no intentions of doing that right now. Okay. But my answer is- Anyone can go to the Board of Health meeting uh, on Thursday night, which was uh, uh, live streamed. Okay. Oh, please, yeah, please hand recorded. Okay, well, um, we have next meeting date of February 7th. Mm -hmm. um, so put that in our agenda, you know, in our, in our calendars. And otherwise, um, anyone, uh, any last comments to make before we adjourn? Thank you for shepherding the meeting. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Good job. Yep. And I'm happy I could make it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's good to see you.
Great to Best see you. Best wishes to Kayla. I hope she's back on her yeah, feet. Yeah. Yep, there she is. <laughs> Thank she you. Was here. She was here. Work. All right. Uh, so then we will have a meeting at uh, it's six uh, twenty-two. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Bye bye.